Open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Aaron Williams. And it is the Beer Guys Radio Show. Once again, we are radio for the local craft beer movement, broadcasting from our flagship studios at AM 920 The Answer in Buckhead. I'm Aaron Williams. And I'm Tim Dennis, and we're getting back to beer this week. We had the hard stuff last week. Aaron. We did, so and some, I, we, we survived to tell the tale. So, yes. Yeah, so we're talking to Gate City Brewing Company, uh, specifically uh, Brian Borngesser and Pat. Pat I, I miss Pat's last name. Pat, what's your last name? Rains. Pat Rains. Pat, Pat Rains. Pat there Rains you go. And Brian so. Borngesser from Gate City Brewing join us here in the studio. Guys, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it, definitely. So, uh, so yeah, so you had an incredibly busy week, Tim. It was... Uh, Kind of crazy. liver and liver killing, actually. So yeah, I was quite so, impressed with the list though that you had. I was tired. Yeah, I was tired. It was a good time. You know, those kind of weeks are always fun, but they'll they'll wear you out. So I had two bottle shares, uh, a beer preview, a brew day at the house. So that that was my week. I got uh, one of the shares was a a great one. They do Pace Magazine hosts an annual share and has yeah, exactly. Some we both went to it. that. So yep, it was, that was a good one. Some uh, some. Wells there. It was Well City. Uh, I yeah. got to try a cable car, Lost Abbey's cable car, which is one that I've wanted for a long time, so that was really good. And then uh, the other bottle share uh, was a bourbon barrel aged Russian Imperial Stout share. Nice. So you can imagine how that goes. Everybody that that may stout, not end so. well, I would think. It was it was fun though. <laughs> yeah, and we definitely. got to uh, got to preview a new one coming from Three Taverns mm-hmm. called Helms Deep, and that is a a bourbon barrel aged Russian Imperial Stout. Uh, Big full body thirteen percent. They're going to debut that at the Strong Beer Fest, okay. And then they'll have a very limited bottle release sometime after that. So very nice. Stay tuned for that one. So that was uh, that was my week. That's fun. That's a pretty good week, actually. It is so, a pretty good week. You yeah. know, it's funny for me actually. You know, of course, we went to that uh, that bottle share with Pace Magazine. Had a ton of whales. Just too many to name. I couldn't write them all down. They were going so fast. But uh, also uh, took a quick trip to Maine. We kind of, you know, we wanted all my relatives live up in Maine. I uh, wanted to go see the grandparents for the Thanksgiving holiday. Realized it was way too expensive to go actually next week. So we went this weekend. So I was able to have a couple of Maine beers. Uh, my uncle and uh, was able to cook me up with some of them. Uh, Rising Tide. They had a session IPA there from a Maine Island Trail IPA, which is which is good. It was not my favorite IPA that I've, or the session IPA I've had, but it was decent. Cutter Imperial IPA though from Long, from Rising Tide. That was a nice nice one uh, there out of the uh, brewery from Portland, Maine. Long Trail Harvest Brown. I had that with a quick brunch, but then the one I really was impressed with was this tiny, tiny brewery out of Orono, Maine, called Marsh Island. Uh, there, like literally, it's it's in the second half of an auto parts shop or an auto body shop. So it's like you got a tasting room, and literally, it's like a little table, chairs, not much bigger than this studio here. And they were making some really, really nice beers. Uh, their Oktoberfest, one of the best ones I've had this year. And then they had a 20-gauge IPA, which is almost a double IPA. Really, really nice. A lot of hop flavor. Not a lot of bitterness to it. But overall, some really nice drinking beers. I was very impressed with those guys. Having a place to consume alcohol next to a place you got to if you got to take your car to the body shop. That's, exactly. That seems like a there's great nothing idea. wrong with that. Exactly. Such really a, enjoyed such that. Such a great well to deal with. <laughs> that's yes. right. That's right. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Truck and Tap Beers of the Week. We got plenty of stuff to drink out there, uh, which is always good on the Beer Guys Radio Show. So, friend of the show, Brian Hewitt, brought us some as well. Hello. And uh, we also have some, though, from our guests at Gate City, we Pat do. and Brian. Gate City brought us their Terminus Porter, their OTP IPA. And is, you guys said you'll have a little sneak peek for us of something you're going to debut at the Strong Beer Fest, right? Yes, we are. Uh, we brought our double tropical stout. We're going to debut that at the Strong Beer Fest. It's Excellent. a 12% uh, tropical stout uh, aged on uh, wood and a uh, little uh, bourbon soaked wood. Very cool. Sounds no, that great. sounds fantastic. So thanks for bringing that, guys. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you guys a little bit more and get your story here and coming up in the next uh, couple of segments. But first, let's get into headlines. What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. Sponsored by Your Pie Perimeter in the Perimeter Place Shopping Center across from Perimeter Mall. So, yeah, some uh, interesting things in the news this week. Uh, First of all, of course, we're talking to Gate City out of Roswell, Georgia. Uh, We've got a brand new 
Brew Pub coming to Roswell as well. They're going to be opening up, it looks like, sometime in uh, next year, next uh, summer or so, called a From the Earth Brewing Company. Uh, they are set to open summer, late summer 2017 at uh, 1570 Holcomb Bridge Road in Roswell. I'm not sure where that is. Guys, do you know, do you, is that in the downtown area or is it? Uh, it's uh, actually no. on the other side of 400. Okay. Um, Okay, so so yeah, so on, not in downtown where you guys are, but on the other side of 400. See, I'm not up in my Roswell geography, yeah. so maybe I should get better at that. But uh, but no, so uh, guys, uh, they've also got uh, Kevin McKerney, who used to work at Sweetwater. Uh, he's been go ahead and uh, going to be the brewmaster at that. And now, see, uh, I was I have a question on that. Yes, Aaron. sure. So I'm not sure exactly. I, I need to. I was going to reach out to Kevin because Kevin is the uh, the brewmaster at uh, Three Taverns Prado. Okay. So I'm, you know, I know he had consulted with another brewery when they started up. So I'm wondering. Five if, Seasons Bravo. Bravo. Uh, I'm sorry. What did I say? Three Taverns. That's right. That's we're wrong. having the That's cranberry right. sauce, yes. and so we're kind of so, me- we're kind of messed up on that. Yes. So, so right. Five Seasons Prado. So yep. uh, I'm curious if this may be, uh, you know, some kind of a consulting thing or that. But uh, but they did say he is going to be working with them on the yeah, recipe. Exactly. The so side. we're not sure. Yeah. But again, it's it's late summer, so things are getting to get together. But always nice to see. Another uh, brewery or a brew pub in place here in the Georgia area. So something that uh, you uh, actually just talked about, too, uh, we've got Dry County up in Kennesaw. They've got a brand new chief technical brewing officer. I I just read that on your post at beerguysradio.com. What's going on? Yeah, Trey reached out to me, so they've added Dr. John Eisenhower. He is a brewing professor at Kennesaw State University. He's been in the industry, has over 20 years of experience, uh, was a brewmaster for a brew Brew pub in Illinois, and he's going to join them. They, they. I asked him. I'm like, "What is a chief de- technical brewing officer?" And he is going to basically advise them when they get new equipment, uh, new canning line, or if they uh, expand their brew house. He'll be there to advise them on how to uh, implement that as quick as possible. So he'll also represent them at national conferences, speaking at national conferences and such. That's very cool. So, uh, so yeah, some good uh, technical information. And by the way, I'd love to have a brewing professor. When I was in college, right, never had one of those, yeah. so uh, so that's good. So, another feather in the cap for Kennesaw State, uh, Paulding County. Uh, we just, of course, had the vote a couple of weeks ago, caused a lot of folks to drink a lot more beer than usual. But uh, I digress. Oconee County, of course, they approve Sunday sales. Paulding County over there on the west side, they also approve Sunday sales of packaged malt beverages and wine outside of the cities of Dallas and Hiram in the county. So the vote was a whopping sixty-seven percent to thirty-three uh, percent. For Sunday sales between twelve thirty and eleven thirty p.m., so shows to shows me that there's quite a bit of support for Sunday sales pretty much across the entire state. Everybody wants their beer on Sunday. They all want their beer on Sunday because it Bloody just Bloody Marys beers. It just mimosas. makes it just makes sense, right, Tim? Absolutely. So yeah, so you also posted a couple of uh, news items too on BeerGuysRadio.com. This one was my favorite, however, from Creature Comforts. Oh yeah, one of my favorite beers. Is coming back. That's I'm just a, gonna let that play. Exactly. Cocoa Bunny. They should have this. Cocoa Bunny is is coming back. That's right. So, uh, end of November. They just said late November. We don't have an exact date just yet, but I'm sure that they'll let us know soon. And they've teased that we should also look out for news coming up on Double Cocoa Bunny. Double Cocoa Bunny is amazing. Uh, had yes. that at their uh, anniversary party last year, and that if you like Cocoa Bunny, that is. Just it was deliciously great. amazing. I had it at uh, Classic City Brew Fest. I tried tried it over there while, when they previewed it, and uh, it is excellent. Yes, it is very good, very good, exactly. So, uh, a couple of new things also too. Of course, uh, Twain has a brand new head brewer, Mike Castagno, uh, former home brewer there, and uh, he's had a nice interview on Eater dot com. We're going to go ahead and post that on BeerGuysRadio dot com as well. So, on our show notes, if you want to check that out. So, uh, interesting background on him. Again, kind of a, a, a grew up in the home brewing scene. Uh, now he's uh, again the brew, new brewmaster at Twain's Brew Pubs and Billiards in Decatur, which was kind of the starting point for a lot of folks uh, here in the brewing industry. Kind of t- before they went, well, I guess to start their own breweries besides besides Twain. So uh, Creature Comforts, uh, one of the guys there, uh, started it off in Twain's too. So so it's about that time. We're going to go ahead and take a break. Pat Rains and Brian Borgesser from Gate City Brewing Company will be joining us. After the break, we'll be talking and cr- talking about their brewery and cracking open a couple of their beers. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website, and we'll be back right after this. Hey, this is Taylor Lamb with Oconee Brewing Company, and you're listening to Beer Guys Radio. Mm-hmm. 
Morgan and Lisa with Your Pie Perimeter here. We'd like to invite you to our store for a beer. Is there anything better than pizza? Yep, brick oven pizza that's made fresh and paired with a cold craft beer. That's what you get at Your Pie Perimeter, located in the Perimeter Place Shopping Center by Perimeter Mall. It's the perfect place to relax on the patio with a pint after work or bring the family in. Follow Your Pie Perimeter on Facebook for all our beer events and specials, including beer tastings that you won't find anywhere else. That's Your Pie Perimeter, located in Perimeter Place Shopping Center next to Chipotle. Tell them that the beer guy sent you. Hey, this is Aaron. I want to thank you so much for listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We've got some really awesome things that are coming soon that will help us engage with you some more. We're not going to lie to you, though. It takes time, effort, and money to produce this show every week. So if you'd like to be part of the Beer Guys family, we would love your help. Head to patreon.com slash beerguys to become a sponsor. We're not going to beg. Okay, maybe just a little bit. But hey, we've got some great swag for those who become a sponsor, and you'll be among the first to know about the great things that are coming to the Beer Guys universe. Again, that's patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash beer guys. Or you can go to beerguysradio.com and click the sponsor link. We thank you for your support and cheers. It's Aaron and Tim, the Beer Guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock is always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy. They have 12 of them. Bottles, too. Not sure what to drink? All of their beer servers are Cicerone certified. And if you got someone who isn't a beer fan, not to worry. Truck and Tap carries wine, mixed drinks, and even handcrafted sodas. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta-area food trucks daily that way you're getting a different menu every day check it out truck and tap in downtown woodstock truck and let them know that the beer guys sent you the beer guys radio show on the beer guys radio network beerguysradio.com follow the beer guys on facebook Twitter and Instagram. To be the man, you gotta beat the man. Woo! Now back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Check us out at beerguysradio.com. We are broadcasting from the AM 920 The Answer Studios in beautiful Buckhead, Atlanta, Georgia, and we're talking to uh, Brian Borgesser and Pat Rains of Roswell's Gate City Brewing Company, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And I see you've just popped the cap on a beer, so. Would one of you tell us what we're about to get into here? Yeah, go on and get into that, Pat. Yeah, so uh, we just launched uh, OTP IPA. Uh, it's an 8% West Coast style double IPA. Um, got the nice dry finish, uh, aggressively hopped, and uh, we think it's a pretty great beer. Nice, awesome. nice. Sounds so good. while we pour that around, uh, let's get your craft beer story. What, guys, what got you into this uh, crazy business? So Pat and I actually met by chance. So we both were living in Roswell. Um, we were both a member of the Roswell Rotary Club up there. Uh, it's a big part of us, civic duty and all that fun stuff. Sure. Uh, and my wife had actually bought me a homebrew kit uh, a while back. And Pat, being from Portland, Oregon, he and I started talking about just brewing and all that fun stuff. We started brewing together. He built his own system. We kind of separated. He was doing his thing. I was doing my thing. And uh, both of us are extremely entrepreneurial, but had our corporate jobs and didn't really have anything that we were going to really kind of jump off the ledge for. Mm -hmm. And we decided, let's just take a look and see what, what the barriers are, put together a business plan. Our beers were tasting, or we're testing really, really well with friends in the market, uh, different competitions. And so uh, we put the plan together and six years after that plan was finished, we brewed our first commercial beer. Nice. And uh, now you're located in downtown Roswell and uh, Gate City has formed. So uh, again, if people don't know why, why do you call it Gate City? Yeah, so the story goes, uh, 1864, that's the name of our IPA. That was the year that Sherman started his march down 20 through Roswell uh, into Atlanta, uh, burned everything in his path, and that led to the uh, end of the Civil War. Uh, Through hard work and determination, uh, the city was rebuilt, and after it was rebuilt, it was pitched to investors as the gate city to the New South. Okay. So it was all about new beginnings for the city of Atlanta. Uh, Gate City Brewing is kind of Brian and I's new beginnings. Um, and we also think that craft beer here in Georgia is kind of going through a little bit of a, a renaissance period and a uh, new beginning in that in that fact as well. You guys kind of, uh, you got your start, you uh, uh, gypsy brewed, I guess it would be the term for, for kind of the way you set it up with yeah, Reformation. So we actually got together with the guys over at Reformation. Uh, Nick Downs over there, I actually met him through a business meeting. 
and we just started talking beer and they were in their infancy trying to get their build out done and their you know reformation off off and running and uh we ended up getting into an agreement where we subleased some space from them we had an alternating proprietorship Mm -hmm. uh structured out and so we had a little small area where pat and i would go in on saturday mornings at like four o'clock in the morning and we'd brew and fill up as many for all the fermenters as much as we possibly could and then uh they kind of watched it through the week and we'd go in there and finish it out and you know move through the process. And for those, I, I know some people listen to our show and, uh, you know, some people that may be n- newer to craft beer mm-hmm. that we have like contract brewing, gypsy brewing and all that. There's different ways to do this, to launch if you don't have your own physical space to start with. And and a lot of people choose this as a good way to get going. We have a few in Georgia that have launched via contract brewing, which is where you basically outsource all of it. You work with another brewery, they get your recipes, they brew for you. But with this case, with the gypsy brewing, you guys are doing the brewing. You're just That's doing correct. it at someone else's facility. That's doing correct. the brewing, all the paperwork, filing, all of that. So under a contract situation, the contract brewer would do all of the federal paperwork uh, and and all of that. And in an alternating proprietorship, you're acting more like the the brewery. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're just brewing at another location. Right. And the, and the goal with this one, uh, naturally for you guys, was do that there, get your product in the market. And get your brewery yeah. going, right? Our, our main goal was we both live in Roswell. We're raising our families there. Our kids go to school there. And we wanted to do something in our backyard. The problem with Roswell is there's not a lot of manufacturing space there. So it took us a lot longer than we had anticipated to try and find a, a proper space for us to build out. And the deal with Reformation lasted longer than anyone really wanted it to. Mm-hmm. But it worked out because it allowed us to, to get our foot in market. Uh, while we tried to find that that perfect space. And luckily, we found a fantastic space right on Canton Street in the middle of downtown Roswell. So I was going to say, if you struggled to find space, boy, when you did find one, it, it it's a great location. So yeah, that's uh, all the shopping and restaurants there. You guys ride it right at the end of it there. Mm-hmm. So very cool. So the this beer is really good, guys. Thanks. The, Thank uh, you. You know, nice, uh, nice bitterness. I'm, I'm an East Coast style guy for the IPAs. I don't like the super in your face west coast and that but this one's just you know, there's enough bitterness where you know it's there and still you know nice juicy fruity hops profile yeah. nice so, dry finish there. too so it's yeah. A, yeah it's a really good good west coast ipa so that's what i enjoy too so i'm from the west coast too so it's uh so it's always important pat so hey uh, we're, we're talking to uh to pat and brian from the uh, gate city brewing company so talk to us a little bit about your tap room that uh, you've just opened and uh having the solid location how has that helped you guys it's been fantastic for us. So if you followed anyone that's followed our brewery knows that we started out super crazy small. I mean, the barrel, that, the barrelage that we put out our first year in operation was in, almost laughable. But what the tap rooms done is it allows it has allowed us to kind of put that put our foot forward and our face forward and get people to to know us and to find us and to see what we're doing and what we can do with our product that's not out in distribution. And it's been a great catalyst for us to get the brand awareness mm-hmm. out there. Yeah, and as Tim said, having that location right there on Canton Street, I mean, we get a ton of walk-up traffic. We've turned it into uh, um, a live music venue, um, so we have live music uh, a lot of Saturdays. Uh, we got great turnouts. We've got eight beers on tap right now, and uh, we're actually in the process of expanding that tasting room, uh, which we hope early uh, next year to open up another 3,000 square feet that we're building out um, just down below um, the upper level. So it's, it's allowed people to come in, see what we're doing, um, provide a great environment uh, to add to Hand Street uh, mm-hmm. that, with all the great restaurants and everything going on there. It was something just different enough uh, that it gave, gave people something new. Now, when you guys started out, it was it was just you two, two two man team going to this. Uh, how, how large is your team now? How much growth have you had that that way? So from a team <laughs> standpoint, we've got – so Pat took over production uh, – He's been running production, doing a fantastic job. We've got two other guys running running production with him. Uh, and then we've got our staff in the tap room. Uh, so we're up to about 12 folks now. Two of the guys that have been in our, that started out in our tap room are starting to kind of transition or actually kind of simultaneously move into a type of a sales role for us as well. Mm-hmm. So we can get more faces out in market and into accounts. So uh, those guys kind of run both sides. And then there's me who... Brian was able to quit my job about three months ago. Come on, full time. Congratulations. Good thank job. you. Thank you. Thank you. And so I kind of run the operations of the business, sales, pay the bills, wash the bathrooms, whatever I possibly can do. <laughs> yeah. So that the brewers can do what they need to do. Many hats. That's right. So uh, make sure you take care of that. Okay, cool. Well, you know, again, we talked about downtown Roswell. Uh, you know, you guys 
uh, really were the kind of the first ones there. Uh, Abbey of the Holy Goats, of course, they were located in Roswell just a little while ago. You've got uh, variants um, we just talked about from the earth that's going to be in this area, too. Maybe even a couple of other ones there. Uh, seems like it's kind of growing as more of a craft beer destination now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you know, I think a lot of it started, uh, the city of Roswell is always looking uh, at how they can help local local businesses and bring great things to the area. And um, about two years ago, a lot of the uh, folks from the government uh, took a trip up to Asheville. And I think that really helped them open their eyes as to what craft brewing can be and bring to an area. Uh, and I think they've done a great job of facilitating uh, a lot of these breweries coming in um, and, and helping you know, they've been great to us, help us get off off the floor um, and get through a lot of the, the red tape and hurdles that uh, a lot of people have uh, trouble with. It's good to see these cities that are really buying into that. That's, you know, we talked to, and I forget which county it was, Aaron, but the, the gentleman talked with us that they're courting a brewery there, basically. Yeah, right, so outside, outside the Athens, Athens era, yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, and you have some others like uh, Nick, and, uh, Nick and Spencer over there at Reformation talk about wanting to be in Canton when they first started, but... Yep. You know, they weren't really open to that, so they ended up in Woodstock. And we're seeing places like Kennesaw is a great example. Mm-hmm. Kennesaw has been very open to it. So we've seen growth there in Roswell. I mean, there's there's so much there's so much more that they bring in than just, you know, it's not just about alcohol. And I've talked to that, you know, many times. Like, like you said, you guys started out too. Now you got a team of about 12. So you're bringing jobs to the local community. And we talked earlier about commuting. So hopefully those people don't have to commute, you know, right there in Roswell. So there you go. Yeah. Some work, but it's a, uh, it's good to see towns around here that are literally buying into that. And, and hopefully that'll go up to the state level, you know, yeah. soon we can get some changes there too. Fingers crossed. Right. Absolutely. Uh, definitely. So we're going to take a break right now. We're going to be back with the guys from gate city, Pat and Brian. You're on the beer guys radio show, BeerGuysRadio.com, And of course we are out on the socials. Come check us out. We'll be back right after this. This is Glenn Golden from Jailhouse Brewing Company. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. The Beer Guys are back right after this. The Beer Guys Radio Show on the Beer Guys Radio Network. BeerGuysRadio.com Hey, it's Aaron. I want to give a quick shout out to our newest sponsor. It's Hop Spot Beer Tours of Atlanta. Now, there's a lot of tours out there, but what makes Hop Spot Beer Tours different? Well, you get exposure. There's more to Atlanta craft beer than just breweries. A Hop Spot Beer Tour gives you the who, what, where, and when to craft beer right here in Atlanta and the state. Education. Whether you're a native, a transplant, or a visitor, you'll always learn something new. And connection. HopSpot connects you to guests, local breweries, and businesses to create those lasting relationships. We invite you to check out what makes HopSpot different. Like them on Facebook, follow them on Twitter and Instagram at HopSpotATL, and of course, visit HopSpotBeerTours.com. Use promo code BEERGUYS10 and receive 10% off your order. HopSpot Beer Tours. Hop on, get connected. That's HopSpotBeerTours.com. Here on the Beer Guys Radio Show, we always encourage you to drink local. And of course, shop local at your favorite bottle shop. But sometimes you want something different. A beer you've heard about online, or maybe you've got a bottle share to attend, but nothing special to bring, or you just want to check out something new. That's where Inside the Cellar comes in. They stock lots of craft beer from breweries that may not be available in your hometown. Shipping is almost free for every 12 you buy, and if you use our special promo code, you'll get 10% off of your order. Inside the Cellar also stocks wines and craft soda, too, and using Inside the Cellar helps us out. So head to BeerGuysRadio.com, click on the Sponsors link at the top of the page, and click the Inside the Cellar icon to shop, and enter our special promo code for 10% off, too. That's BeerGuysRadio.com, click the Sponsors link, and then go to Inside the Cellar. Hoy there, mateys. Hunting whales? We've got you covered with Tim's Whale of the Week. Yar, we've got some good whales for you. 
We do, man. So a few to keep an eye out for this week. Uh, some that hit earlier this week. Should still be some more out there. Uh, maybe. Hopefully. If hopefully. you're lucky. Yes. Uh, Terrapins Muhu Kiato returns. Nice. So I think 2014 was the last time they released that one, part of the Reserve Series. Uh, they've made a change from 22-ounce bottles to 500 milliliters this year. Okay. So there should be, I'm thinking if they did the same batch size, that should mean... More bottles. More for so everyone. a little easier yes. to get your hands on. So we actually have a bottle of that here we'll uh, get into later. Sure, so, why not? Yes. And uh, we also have uh, Old Fantastic then and Reclaimed Rise are releasing from Creature Comforts mm-hmm. uh, on the uh, 22nd. And uh, those are ones brewery only releases. They're they're putting out a lot of nice beers. From yeah, brewery only release. So. Yeah, and of course, reclaimed rise is their coffee reclaimed rye. Right. So, yep. and they've had that on tap at their Athens location quite a bit. It's it's delicious. It's good. Yeah. yeah. So one you can get another uh, two can releases. They said you can get a six pack of either one, or they'll do a mix six for you. There, there you go. So get some of each. And uh, Monday night's bourbon barrel drafty kilt released at the brewery uh, last week, and it's uh, hitting retail as well. So Good that's deal. one that's a fantastic beer. It's won a gold medal before, mm-hmm. and it's uh, it's one I like to keep keep around. I got the last few years in the beer cellar, and we'll definitely add this one as well. We've got a couple of mine as well. So very yeah. cool, very cool. And, uh, yeah, we're back with uh, Pat Rains and Brian Borgesser from Gate City Brewing in Roswell. They cracked open their Terminus Porter during the break, and you liked it so much, Tim. You've already killed it. I didn't even make it back from break, and no. my glass was empty air, and that's that's how much I enjoyed it. It's, it's uh, super good and something I commented on and actually started an interesting discussion. So I've been... Trained, you know, porters are, are a little darker, but the classic porter, this is uh, uh, this is closer between what you see in most porters and like a brown ale in in the coloration of it. So it's not going to be that that darker brown. There's a little clarity to it. You can see through this beer a little bit, but the flavors are are super on point. Just a, just a really really nice porter. Now it's like we said, you know, give me some 55 degree temps and a a sweatshirt and a fire pit. Yep. Set out and really enjoy this. Beer. I'll let the kids roast the s'mores, and I'll be having this. That's That'll be right. good. I'll have a s'more with this. I <laughs> oh, sure, why not? Really nice. I bet right? it would too. Actually, yeah. too. There, there you go. go. So. Well, uh, H H&M, actually H and F Burger down at Pont City Market. They use it to do a chocolate milkshake. Oh, nice. There you go. Yeah. Sounds perfect. It's got those so. chocolatey, roasty flavors in there, so that yeah. would be really good. Well, we've so. talked about what we think about this beer, guys. But why don't you tell us a little bit about the beer itself? Yeah. So. Um, Tim, you, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, part of what we like to do, too, uh, I like to brew to the edge of styles. Um, so I'm, I'm generally not dead center on a style. I like to stay to the edges uh, and play around. So um, this is a Baltic porter. We firm it a little bit lower. We firm it around 62, uh, 7.8%. You get the chocolate. You get the coffee flavor coming off of there. Uh, and, and yet it's still, it's not real heavy. It's a real easy drinking porter. Um, and that's exactly what we were going with for with the the Baltic Porter. What's the ABV on this? Seven point eight. Okay, good. So nice. Yeah, so nice, fairly low port- porter. And like I said, I mean, it's it drinks really well and uh, just nice. Yeah, a nice easy <laughs> drinking porter. Yeah. That's about all. You, you guys can go into the technical details. All I know that it just tastes really this, good. This, nice work. This beer drink pretty good, don't it? It, it drink pretty good, don't it? That's right. So. That's right. Well, guys, you talked a little bit about there, Brian or uh, Pat. You just mentioned kind of how like you like to brew to the edges a little bit. So is that is that kind of your philosophy? Do you because it seems like you're doing Fairly traditional styles, but uh, you know uh, a little a little bit out from there. So, what's your overall brewing philosophy? I guess. Sure. So um, we started very classic styles. Uh, that was one thing um, we wanted to start. Kind of being in Roswell, it's a different. Uh, it's a little bit of a different crowd. It's not necessarily uh, the heavy craft beer crowd. So we we knew that we had to start um, with some basic styles um, for the area that we were brewing for. As we've gone, we've really expanded our portfolio. So early on, we we uh, we took a lot of guff from people about brewing pretty boring styles, and um, but but really what we're trying to do do, and you'll see it now is is now we're having fun. Now we're getting to do some different stuff. We brought in our double tropical stout. We just brewed a Russian Imperial at thirteen um, percent. We finally got things to where we can push the limits a little bit. Um, my philosophy overall is I want to I want to offer a broad range of beers. I believe that with a broad range of beers, you can find a beer for every person out there. Um, and so we will brew everything from a uh, Berliner Weiss at at two and a half three percent, a cream ale, an amber, an IPA, a double IPA, a triple IPA, all the way up to these Russian Imperials. And what you'll see is we want to brew every style well. Um, they may not be right in the middle of the style. Um, they may be on the edge, but we believe that um, that 
we have an opportunity to brew a lot of different styles well and give people an opportunity to find things that they like within our por- portfolio. And prob- you probably your most approachable one is your uh, Copperhead American Amber too. So again, nice uh, balanced one. Is that kind of your entry level beer that you that you bring out to people mostly? Yeah, I mean, being in, being on Canton Street right there, we get everything from uh, the guy that comes in and says, "I want something light and fuzzy, fizzy, and 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 you know, I drink Miller Light." Um, but Copperhead is kind of. And you run him back out on the street when he says that, right? So <laughs> I the, turn around, hand him a twenty gram, hand him a cream, <laughs> him a cream right. ale, yeah. and, and he's happy yeah. generally. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I think uh, that amber ale is a is a great intro to craft, but it's also a very drinkable. Uh, it, it it's got enough complexity for everyone, uh, but it does suit itself well to the newer craft beer drinker. It's my wife's favorite beer. Mm-hmm. A, lot, a lot of. Um, a lot of people that maybe aren't into craft beer or drink a lot of craft beer really can get into it. It it has a darker color, but it drinks really light and smooth. It it does, a, and yeah, go ahead. No, Sorry. no, Pat, you and I had talked at, at your pie when yeah. you did the when you did the pint night there at your pie perimeter, and, and I told you I said, "Hey, Pat, some real talk here. This is considerably better than w- when you guys launched." And that's something that you know I, I hope more people understand that when a, when a new brewery comes out, you guys may, may be making. The world's best homebrew, but you move systems that changes things, and it's it's going to take a little while to get that together. And you guys have done it a couple times already, yeah. going from Reformation to your own brewery. Everything that I've tried from you guys again, compared to when I tried it when you first launched, is tremendously improved. Very nice. So that's I we, encourage everybody if you got them when they first came out, give them another shot. Go out there and try them again. And so. we really appreciate those words. I mean, we it, we knew it. We knew it when we sure. were brewing over at Reformation. We didn't have full control. Uh, we we knew that there were things that were lacking. We were going into plastic fermenters initially because that's what we could afford. So there was a lot of room for improvement there. And getting into our own space, building out, um, Pat coming on full-time and being able to handle it from start to finish completely, you know, it allowed us to give us full-time con- full control over it. We could make sure that we were hitting that process all the way through it. And it's it's made a considerable difference. It's something that, you know, even as a home brewer, you know, I've got the same system, but you know, going back and repeating the batches, it's a. Uh, if you've never brewed beer, you wouldn't realize the 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 challenge it is, and the you know the the consistency it takes to do that. And you yeah. know, there's always something that can be tweaked. So. Well, and we production's nothing. We don't take it lightly. I mean, we haven't. We've been very lucky in the fact that we haven't had any production issues with beer that's gone out. We haven't had any real recalls that come that have come gone out come th- come back to us. We haven't had any issues with clarity on beer. We haven't had any issues with any of that stuff. So we take it very, very seriously. We put a lot of time into it. We let the beer finish out. We don't rush it. And, uh, you know, starting the way that we did has allowed us to do that. Because when you're small, I mean, we were literally crawling. And 2017, we're ready for a full sprint because we finally got every, everything's hitting right. Uh, we got the right people in place. And we're, we're extremely excited for what the future, future looks like for Gate City. And. Tim, I think you hit the nail on the head with um, a lot of people just don't realize when you're getting started out and when you're changing systems. You know, we went in on a three barrel system thinking we were mm-hmm. making so much beer, making 100 gallons of beer. And, you know, we sold out right away. And within literally, I think, four batches, we brewed on that system before we went to the next. And the challenges of changing systems, if you've brewed, anytime you change a system, there's so many variables that go into it. You have to get it dialed in. You've got to continuously tweak it you got to figure out how you are consistent on that system and so we went through the first six months um we were on three different systems and that really i think took its toll of just trying to get everything dialed in and uh, i think brian hit the nail on the head we're proud um to get in our own space and be able to, to consistently produce quality beer and like Tim said, if if you gave us a try early on and you weren't impressed, we'd love to have you up to the brewery. Come by. We've got eight different beers on tap. We've got about 15 different beers that we rotate in, uh, and, and we're pretty certain we can find something, something for you. Awesome. Guys, uh, we need to take a quick break here. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show, beerguysradio.com, and we'll be back right after this with Gate City Brewery. This is Spike from Terrapin Beer Company. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Morgan and Lisa with Your Pie Perimeter here. We'd like to invite you to our store for a beer. Is there anything better than pizza? Yep. 
Brick oven pizza that's made fresh and paired with a cold craft beer. That's what you get at Your Pie Perimeter, located in the Perimeter Place Shopping Center by Perimeter Mall. It's the perfect place to relax on the patio with a pint after work or bring the family in. Follow Your Pie Perimeter on Facebook for all our beer events and specials, including beer tastings that you won't find anywhere else. That's Your Pie Perimeter, located in Perimeter Place Shopping Center next to Chipotle. Tell them that the beer guy sent you. Hey, this is Aaron. I want to thank you so much for listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We've got some really awesome things that are coming soon that will help us engage with you some more. We're not going to lie to you, though. It takes time, effort, and money to produce this show every week. So if you'd like to be part of the Beer Guys family, we would love your help. Head to patreon.com slash beerguys to become a sponsor. We're not going to beg. Okay, maybe just a little bit. But hey, we've got some great swag for those who become a sponsor. And you'll be among the first to know about the great things that are coming to the Beer Guys universe. Again, that's patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash beer guys. Or you can go to beerguysradio.com and click the sponsor link. We thank you for your support and cheers. It's Aaron and Tim, the Beer Guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock is always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy. They have 12 of them. Bottles, too. Not sure what to drink? All of their beer service are Cicerone certified. And if you got someone who isn't a beer fan, not to worry. Truck and Tap carries wine, mixed drinks, and even handcrafted sodas. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily that way you're getting a different menu every day check it out truck and tap in downtown woodstock truckandtap.com let them know that the beer guys sent you follow the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram i believe you have my stapler now back to the beer guys radio show all right, Beer Guys Radio. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website. We're, of course, on the socials. Wrapping things up with the guys from Gate City Brewing in Roswell, Pat Rains and Brian Borngesser joins us in the studios. Thanks again for uh, joining us uh, this week and bringing some delicious beer, especially this one that we just cracked open. Tell us a little bit about this one quickly. So this is uh, this is our going to be our entry for the Strong Beer Fest down at Wrecking Bar. Uh, this is a double tropical stout. Um, we took our tropical stout that we brewed and had a lot of success with in the tasting room. We doubled it up. We took it to 12%, uh, and then we put some oak spirals in there. We brew it with molasses, so you get a nice sweet um, uh, nose and smell uh, and taste from the molasses. Uh, and a real easy drink in 12%. It, um, it's surprisingly smooth. It's kind of dangerous. Easy drinking 12%. That's <laughs> exactly. dangerous right there. No, this is really good. That's why I said I get to, I get a little bit of the... A little bit of the booze on the nose, the molasses. Uh, it's very silky, chocolatey. Mm. Uh, there's and there is a a fruity uh, characteristic to the aroma in that. This is, but again, guys, very nice beer. Thank you so much. So, Thank you. Uh, Pat, you want to take a minute and explain what exactly a double tropical stout is? Yeah. So a tropical stout, we get asked this all the time, and and it's kind of it's kind of funny at times uh, to see what people think. But uh, tropical stout. So uh, it's actually a foreign export stout. Uh, similar to Guinness style, same style as Guinness. Um, but uh, uh, when it was brewed in the tropical islands, they used sugar, sugar cane or molasses that they had available um, to brew it. So that's where that comes from. We use molasses in, in the brew, uh, and that's why it's called a tropical stout. This sounds like it's begging to be rum barrel aged. Oh, yeah. With the sugar cane molasses in that. So Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. We, 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 didn't, didn't, we didn't have time to do it for the strong beer. There first. you yeah. go. Okay. Excellent. Cool. We'll put me on the list for that, definitely. Well, guys, what's uh, what's coming in the future? What are we going to see? You, you planning on packaging? What yeah. what beers you got coming our uh, way? Great segue. Uh, we 2017 is going to be big for us. 2017 is going to be a great year. We just, uh, we just filled our first barrels. So uh, we, we're starting our barrel program. Uh, hope to have some of those ready ready to go early next year. Uh, along with that, we're looking at getting into packaging. So we'll be in 12-ounce cans in the first quarter of next year, hopefully. Okay. Uh, and so we've been working on that. Along with that, we're also working on our 3,000-square-foot addition to the tasting room. So um, we started with our tasting room right there in the brewery, and we're now building out 3,000 square feet uh, downstairs that's actually on grade with uh, six roll-up garage doors, 29-foot bar, stage for live music. Uh, it'll be a, a, a nice little outdoor beer garden, uh, it, and we're pretty excited to launch that. We're really shooting for the, the beginning of the year um, to kind of open that up and, and get that going. So lots of new things coming from us, along with uh, a bunch of new beers that, that uh, we're putting did you, out. Did you really just put a deadline on that? 
No, I didn't put an exact time. I said beginning of next year. No, it's, it's there you on go. the show, guys. It's official <laughs> yeah, exactly. now. So, yeah. Beginning could be February. It could be June. We don't yes. know. You've got plenty of cushion there. Exactly. So cool. Brian and Pat, again, appreciate you guys joining us today. No, thanks for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure. Speaking of good stuff, it is time for the hot list. Time for the hot list. The beer guys have the scoop on what you need to know for next week. That's hot. So what's hot in Georgia, Tim? What is hot in Georgia? Everything's hot in Georgia. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know, we are no. a little unseasonably warm. Yeah, here, it is. It's we? actually quite chilly 70s. this weekend. So and down to we, the 50s this weekend, too. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's so maybe we're not that seasonable. hot. I don't know. So, yeah. Nothing's hot. Well, see, now you just totally throw me off I, I ruined there, the segue. So. I apologize, Tim. But anyhow, okay. yes. if, if it's, whether it's hot or cold, Aaron, yes. uh, tomorrow, why don't you go do some yoga and hoppiness? At sure. Second Self. Okay. Good out there. Beer, yoga. So also at Your Pie Perimeter, one of our awesome sponsors, they're having a Sunday fun day, and they do a Walking Dead watch party there. So get together with other fans. I think Walking Dead starts at 9 p.m. Sunday fun days all day long. So they'll have a uh, Walking Dead bear special. Just ask for the Walking Dead bear special, and they'll have a feature beer. Pints for only three dollars and fourteen, and then drink your sorrows away when your favorite character dies. That's it. Mm-hmm. I haven't watched the show in years. I, I watched like the first season. So gotcha. I'm, there you go. I'm way behind there, so it wouldn't matter. I mean, you can kill them all. I'll there. just drink through there. <laughs> there you so go. yeah. So, but uh, then on Tuesday, comedy night at Eventide, and also on Tuesday, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, oh, fantastic! Then Pellel and the Reclaimed Rise uh, Coffee Reclaimed Rye will be releasing over there. Uh, brewery only at Creature Comforts in Athens. Take the trip over for that. Wednesday, kind of a busy Wednesday. We got one off Wednesday at Red Brick where they do a one off beer in their tap room. The Thanksgiving Eve at Reformation and uh, the last trivia night of the year at your pie perimeter. So if so. you're like, you know, all your relatives are coming into town for the Thanksgiving holiday and you just are, are, are tired of them, you can just go to Red Brick Reformation or your pie this, and uh, yeah, just kind of. Or kinda, all of them. Yes, or so, all. Yes. <laughs> Depends exactly. what kind of relatives what kind you have. What kind of family do you have? <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. That's so. right. Oh, okay. you'll be open too? Okay, good. Go. So, yeah, so, so Gate City will be open too. Good. See, you've got it no matter where you are. You've got Wednesday covered. So then once you make it through Thanksgiving, and if you feel like avoiding the shopping and all the craziness, there's some awesome Black Friday events at uh, breweries and uh, okay. different bottle shops. So as I know, I'm sure most people know that are beer fans, Black Friday is a big release day. Yes. So there's a beer from uh, Goose Island, Bourbon County brand style. You might that have heard of it, yes. People are, are uh, highly opinionated now that they've sold to uh, Big Beer. But a lot of people who talk about how much they dislike beer, big beer, still go out and get Bourbon County Stout. Yeah. So they'll be, uh, yeah, Brian just showed he's actually rocking his oh, Bourbon there you County go. shirt here. Yes. So. And you know, actually, but, it's funny, uh, kind, of a, kind of an interesting transition. We do have a separate podcast called Project BGR, and uh, yes. we actually talked to the, a couple of guys from Goose Island uh, talking about Bur- uh, Bourbon County Stout and the yeah. release and the issues they had last issues year. last year, what so, they did. Yeah, if you want to check that out. Super uh, nice guys. Super nice guys, super yeah. chill guys. Yeah. So, so they're, uh, but on Black Friday here, Georgia, mm-hmm. uh, 5 a.m., Black Friday beers at Reformation. <laughs> and this kind of become wow. a tradition. They've done this a few years now. So you can go there. So by the time you get to the stores for the sales at 6 a.m., you'll be lit up and irritable, perfect to go shop. Or I'll just so, drop my wife off at Target, and then I'll just come go. here, and I'll be perfect. Yep. There you go. That's what you need um, to do. Also, yep. kegs and eggs at Cherry Street. There so you go. So they have breakfast foods, keg beers. And uh, also Dry County is doing a Black Friday event. And our friends at Lincoln Fill Station are doing a Bourbon County event there. Uh, for Black Friday. Yes, and I'll so, be there. And also, uh, The Nest is having a uh, Bourbon County release at 11 o'clock, I believe, on that okay. Friday, too. I missed so, that one. Yeah, so, so we got a lot of stuff going so on. Black Friday, plenty of beer to be had. There you go. So. In Alabama, we've got some interesting things going on, too. So I usually don't like to do Highlight Saturday events, uh, but this one is usually is a good one for me because one of my favorite things in the world. The Highland Games. Okay. If you like some caber tossing and some kilts. And then who you, doesn't? Oh, of course. Right. Who doesn't like that? Uh, head to Rocket Republic Brewing Company in Madison. That starts at 3 p.m. So, again, go uh, toss some telephone poles around with the Highland Games. Uh, Sunday, they're having a beer dinner at Below the Radar in Huntsville with a back of 40 brewing. Wednesday, they're having the night before turkey at Folklore Meeting Brewing and Meadery in Dothan. So we've got some stuff going on there. Uh, a couple other things going on Wednesday as well. Fairhope is having a, a fall beer tasting at Hop City, Birmingham. Uh, so check out some of the new releases from Fairhope. And uh, finally, on Friday, their uh, Singing River Brewing Company is having their tapping, which is a painted blackberry. Uh, I believe that's a sour that they're having there. So, and that's from 4 to 9 p.m. So lots of cool stuff uh, on the hot list from Alabama and Georgia. I missed an event, Aaron. Oh, you I did? Okay. Th- and this is so next Saturday. 
uh, next Saturday, Malts and Vaults at Oakland Cemetery. Hmm. And we just had uh, had the authors of Atlanta Beer History on here. Yeah. So this is the event they were talking about, where they go through and, and they look at all the historical people of Atlanta Beer that are buried in the Oakland Cemetery and kind of tell the story there. So uh, check it out, Malts and Vaults at Oakland Cemetery next Saturday. That sounds like a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. head to BeerGuysRadio.com for the full list of events that are going on across Alabama and also Georgia. Time for a giveaway to give away. We do have a winner again this weekend Yay. in our giveaway. We have Eric Soto. Eric, thank you so much for subscribing to the newsletter, following along with the Beer Guys. Uh, please drop us an email to beerguys at beerguysradio.com and, uh, to claim your prize pack. And Aaron... You know the drill, man. How That's can right. people get involved? Well, Tim, all they have to do is uh, sign up for This Week at Georgia Beer to head to BeerGuysRadio.com. Sign up for This Week at Georgia Beer. It's going to be right there at the top of the page, or it'll be a pop-up. And uh, we won't spam you, we promise. Uh, we're going to only give you good Georgia Beer release information, thanks to Tim, every Friday morning. But uh, getting on that newsletter signs you up automatically to win a bunch of swag from our guests. And uh, so... A lot of fun, a lot of good information, and then you can win some stuff, too. I want to hear you pitch that all the way with the voice. No, I can't do that very much. I can only do it for a few minutes yeah. before I really start to hurt my throat. It's so. a good try, though. Well, thank you. So, I appreciate yeah. that. So we've got about a minute left here. Thanksgiving plans. What are, you, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? I'm hosting this year. Nice. So we're having the Friendsgiving at my house. I won't be traveling. I'll be doing that. And uh, I've got a few dishes I really like to make. I have an asparagus casserole that's uh, made with a cracker crust, cheese, mushroom soup, asparagus, cheddar, bake that all in there. One of my favorites, I'm doing a turkey, and uh, we'll see what else everybody, everybody else brings. So I'm doing a few dishes, and we're potlucking the rest. So that's that's my plan. Very and and cool. I'm going to drink beer. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, the, the brewery's Autumn Maple is the one that I always bring uh, to, okay. to our events. Yeah. That's the one that I get yep. with. And uh, I always want a deep fried turkey. And that's my thing. And some cranberry sauce. That's true. Year, cranberry right? sauce. I'm going to bring those, yeah. those as well. So that'll be Before a Before dinner, a good thing. after dinner. That's right. That's right. Very excellent. How about you, Aaron? Yeah, we're going to fry a turkey at my house. I've got uh, both of my, my, pa- my family's here. My wife's family just moved here this week. So we've got the full capacity of relatives and okay. then the three kids. So we'll be uh, having a good time and uh, hopefully eating a lot of food Love and uh, watching football yeah. and I'll be drinking a lot of beer. Yeah. You guys, how about you? What's your Thanksgiving plans? Well, we're getting back from uh, a trip with our two little girls from Disney, so I'll be recuperating. Uh, okay. <laughs> there right. you go. Yep. And we'll be uh, with my wife's family uh, down in Stone Mountain and uh, having a good time eating eating a lot of food and drinking a little bit of beer. Can't argue with that, right? Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Well, that's about time for us to wrap it up today. Uh, next week, we've got uh, our Thanksgiving special so uh, check that out beerguysradio.com is our website of course we're also on the socials as well so have a great week and don't forget to drink local cheers